Now, now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, a breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on! Huskies. Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike and the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Say, the owl is a wise old bird. And here's my idea of someone who's plenty smart, too. It's the fellow or girl who eats a breakfast of Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat with milk or cream and fruit. These king size, ready to serve premium grains of rice or wheat, are shot from guns. Yes, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. No fooling, wheat or rice shot from guns is so crisp and tender, it melts in your mouth. It's good for you, too. So tomorrow morning, be smart. Enjoy this breakfast treat, Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Mrs. Trent held the doll up for Jeff Morton's inspection. What do you think of her? Oh, she's beautiful, May. Mary's going to love her. I I can't thank you enough. Why, dressing this doll has made my Christmas for me, Jeff. I'm only sorry that Paul and Mary won't be here tomorrow. Well, you know what the doctor said. Mary has to stay in bed for a few more days. You're perfectly right. There's no sense in taking chances after the seed she's been through. I'll have her down here for a party on her birthday. Yeah, now, do you have everything? And there's candy. Well, here. Cookies? Here. Oh, and here's the doll. Now, be careful of her. You can bet I will. And be careful of yourself, too. It's a dangerous trail up there in the woods, especially after you hit the creek. Well, Merry Christmas. I'll see you, May. Thanks again. Jeff drove out of the little town of Greenwood just as it was getting dark. He followed the Klondike in the direction of Dawson until he neared the mouth of Christmas Creek. He could see a large campfire near the edge of the woods, and thinking it might be some of his friends on their way to Dawson, he drove straight toward it. But the sight of a tall figure lit by the flames made him step on the brake and call out to his team to stop. Oh, oh there. Gee, gee there, get around. It's Taranga. This is escape from jail. To and his renegades. Get around there. As Jeff turned his team around, the renegade chief Taranga saw him. Mush! Mush on! Taranga ordered his men to open fire. Uh-oh. One of the bullets hit Jeff in the right leg, but his grip was firm on the crossbar, and he managed to stay on the running board. I gotta warn the folks in Greenwood. Mush! He urged his team back along the trail to Greenwood, and his dogs soon carried him out of range of the renegade's guns. But he didn't dare stop and take care of his wound at that moment. On he drove until he saw the seven buildings that made up the little settlement. When he reached Harry Worth's store, he called out to the team to stop. Oh, oh there. Oh. Harry! It was six-year-old Sonny Worth who opened the door. Mr. Morton! Get your dad, Sonny, and start ringing the fire bell. Dad, it's Jeff Morton. He's been hurt. Dad! What's that? What's the matter, Sonny? Why are you ringing Come here, Harry. Jeff! I just saw Tarang and about 20 men. What? At the mouth of Christmas Creek. You better get everybody into the store. They're heading this way. You know what you're saying, man. Of course I do. I saw them. But they haven't got dogs. It'll be a little while. Hey, you've been wounded. I stubbed a bullet in my leg. I, I can walk, though, if you help me. Where's the fire, Harry? There's no fire. There's Tarang and his renegades. They're heading this way. Right, everybody into the store. Everybody. Hey, get in the store, man. Say, keep that bell ringing. 
Ten minutes later, all the inhabitants of the little community were standing around Jeff while the doctor bandaged his leg. I'll be through in a minute, Jeff. You won't be able to move for at least two or three days. But my kids, Paul and Mary, I've got to get back to them. I'll go up there as soon as this is over. Joe, come on with me. Right. You too, Mac. There's guns and ammunition in the storeroom. Hey, there's a dog team coming into town from the east. You said Taranga didn't have any dogs, Jeff. I saw him at Christmas Creek to the west. I recognize the lead dog. It's King. It's Sergeant Preston. On his way back from Lost River. The sergeant and King were welcomed. Jeff told his story, and the sergeant took charge of the preparations for the siege. Each man was at his post with an extra loaded rifle and a store of ammunition beside him. And all the lamps had been put out when the defenders heard the yells of Taranga's men. The fight began. Taranga tried to rush the building, but his first charge was driven back. Then he split up his followers. They surrounded the store and started creeping toward it. They aren't giving us much of a target now, but we can still keep them back. May Twent and Sonny Worth sat close to the wounded Jeff Morton on the floor. One of the renegade shots shattered the glass from a window, and the boy covered his head. Oh, Sonny. I'm scared. Oh, you mustn't be. What will happen if they get in here? They won't, Sonny. Do you think the sergeant would let them do that? You must be brave like him. All right, I'll try. But it's Christmas Eve, and they spoiled everything. Oh, no one can spoil Christmas Eve. We were going to have a party. We were going to sing songs and play games. Well, come on. Let's sing a song right now, then. Let's show Taranga he can't scare us. It came upon a midnight clear, that glorious song of old. Come on, Sonny, sing with me. All right, we'll show him. It came upon a midnight clear, that glorious song of old. Hold it, come in. The I think they've had enough. They're clearing out. Hold your fire. be coming back tonight, but just to be safe, you'd all better stay right here until morning. You men can take turns standing guard. Okay, Sergeant. What are you going to do, Sergeant? King and I will try to make it to Dawson. I'm going there and bring back every man we have in the barracks. Taranga and his crew must be rounded up if there's going to be any peace in the Yukon tomorrow. Sergeant, I gave my word to Jeff. His boy and girl, Paul and little Mary, they're up there in the hills in his cabin all alone. I promised I'd go and make sure that they were safe. We'll all go. That isn't a job for one man. Yes, it is, Harry. I'll stop at the cabin on my way. What? You will, Sergeant? Of course, Jeff. What's more, I'd better take Paul and Mary into Dawson with me. Is that all right, Doc? Oh, I guess so. If Mary's bundled up well, better to take a chance on a little cold weather than on Taranga. But, Sergeant, you don't know where my new cabin is. Is it far from the old one? No. That was at the head of the creek. Well, yes, at the foot of the hill. There's a trail leading up through the woods. My new place is in a clearing right at the top of the hill. Yes, Paul will have a light burning in the window. It'll be easy to find. Maybe too easy. I, I mean, if those There's others... There's no reason to think they're heading in that direction. But they might. Oh, heaven forbid. Heaven will, I'm sure. Don't worry, Jeff. I'll get the children. Oh, somehow I'm sure you will, Sergeant. Will you take Mary's doll with you? What? It's on my sled. Oh, the tyke won't have any Christmas at all if Santa doesn't bring her that doll. Take it to us, Sergeant. Of course, Jeff. I'll get it for you. One king. <laughs> The doll was given to the sergeant, the team was lined up, and he started out of green. On King! On! As he turned west on the Klondike, he could hear the little group in the store start to sing. Their voices soon faded in the distance. It was a brilliant night, moon and stars and the northern lights. Green, yellow, and red streaking across the sky... He soon checked the speed of the team. Easy, King. Easy, boy. He had let everyone think he intended to head straight for Jeff's cabin and then drive on to Dawson. But his first mission was to find out where Taranga and his men had gone. It was their trail he was following, and it led him straight back to Christmas Creek. At the mouth, he found the site of their old camp. 
They hadn't stopped there. Oh, King. Oh, you have to Start it up the creek, King. I think we'd better leave the team here, boy, and hide the sled. If they've made camp somewhere up above, we'll have to circle them to get to Jeff's place. Work our way through the forest. All we can hope is that they haven't gone too far. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Hmm, I wonder if we're going to have a visitor today. Well, sure enough. And our visitor is a lady. Rather elderly one. Dressed up a bit behind the times. But... Hello there, young man. Why, hello. I'm the old woman who lives in the shoe. You're what? You're the old woman who lives in the shoe? Yes, indeed. Well, I guess the housing shortage is rather bad. Oh, we don't mind. We? Yes, myself and all the children. Oh, that's right. You're the lady with so many children, you don't know what to do. But I do. Huh? I mean, I do know what to do with the children. I see. They're really very well behaved nowadays. Oh? Especially around breakfast time. Ah. Everything's fine now since we started having good breakfast. A Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. I take it the children kind of go for wheat or rice shot from guns. Oh, indeed they do. We have the wheat one morning, the rice the next. That's a fine idea. It's easy on me, too, what with having such a large family. You mean because Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are so easy to serve? Yes, and with milk or cream and fruit, they make a thrifty, nourishing breakfast. That's right. Wheat or rice shot from guns furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and diamond. Oh, oh, land sakes, I must be going now. Back to the shoe? I, I mean home? My, yes. I've got to fix everyone's supper. Supper? Gee, I don't envy you that job. There's nothing to it. The children have been so good lately, I promised them a special treat tonight. Their choice of Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat with their favorite food. Well, goodbye now. <laughs> well, sir, that's a fine idea. Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat hit the spot at supper time as well as breakfast time. These king-size kernels are shot from guns to make them bigger and better tasting. Yes, they're actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Don't be missing out. Make sure you get both delicious kinds, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, tomorrow. Now to continue our story. The sergeant drove his team into the cover of the trees at the mouth of Christmas Creek. The dogs were unharnessed and immediately burrowed in the snow and went to sleep. Fur boughs were piled over the sled. Then the sergeant placed Mary's doll in his knapsack with a few supplies in his first aid kit, and he and King started out. They followed the trail carefully, on and on toward the head of the creek. It was a relief when he finally saw a campfire glowing through the trees. Easy, boy. They're at the foot of the hill. It's just above where Jeff's old cabin is. We'll make sure of the exact spot, and we'll work our way around them. Come on. Silently, the sergeant and King made their way toward the campfire until they could see Taranga's tall figure, his bitter, twisted face. There were at least 20 men with him. Good enough. Now they got up to Jeff's cabin, gang. <laughs> they cut to the west for 200 yards before they started up the wooded slope. Then suddenly, King growled a warning. He and the sergeant dropped to the ground in the shadow of a low bush. They heard a branch crack to their left. Then the sound of footsteps. Two of the renegades carrying firewood, a third with a rifle, were walking toward them. Closer and closer. They were less than a dozen feet away from the bush that concealed the sergeant and king when they passed it. The sergeant held his breath. Directly above him, a fir bough was heavily weighted with snow. For hours, the snow had been exerting a steady pressure. And now the bough gave way to it slightly, and the snow slid from the branch to the ground. The Indian with a rifle whirled and fired in the direction of the sound. The sergeant stifled a groan. The Indians talked together for a moment and then moved on toward their campfire. Paul Morton was only 11, but he was a husky youngster. He was dozing in a chair near the window where a lighted candle burned. 
The shot woke him. Oh. Hey, it sounded like a rifle. Paul. What, Mary? I heard a shot. That was only a limb cracking in the coal. You know the way they do. Well, it sounded like a shot. It wasn't. It's Indians. It's Duranga. Go on. He's in jail. What if he got out? Would he come back here? How could he get out? You forget about Taranga. Why did Pa have to go away? He had to go and tell Santa Claus what you wanted for Christmas. A new dress and a dollar. <laughs> now what's the matter? Santa Claus won't come here. Of course he will. Taranga won't let him. Oh, where do you get such ideas? Santa Claus is a lot braver than Taranga. Well, I can handle him. Oh, well, you can't. I can, too. I can shoot just as good as Pa can. And if Taranga comes around here, I'll give it to him good. Why don't you go to sleep, Mary? Santa Claus won't come if you don't. He won't come anyway. Oh, oh don't. Listen. To what? I think I hear somebody coming up the hill. Well, it isn't Pa. The dogs would be barking. I guess I was just imagining things. Don't go away. I'm not... I think maybe I'll shine up this rifle some. But you're not shining it. You're loading it. I'm just seeing if it needs oiling, too. Well, you're scared somebody's coming here. No, I'm not. You better be. Pa, somebody's outside. Who's there? Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. Oh. What did he say? It's Sergeant Preston. Just a second. Hello, Sergeant. Come on in. Thank you, Paul. Hello, King. He still remembers me. Gosh, it's good to see you, too. Why? Anything happened here? No, but Pa isn't back from Greenwood. Oh. Sort of lonely, just Mary and me. Your father's staying in Greenwood tonight, Paul. I was going to take you and Mary with me to Dawson, but I... Sergeant, what's the matter? You've been hurt. Here, sit down on this bench. Thanks. I'd better hang a blanket over the window, Paul. Oh, all right, Sergeant. Without another word, the boy understood there was some danger lurking outside in the forest. He fixed a blanket over the window and lit the candle. Then he helped the sergeant out of his pocket. Oh, there, Sergeant. You've got a red coat, haven't you? Yes, Mary. This is my uniform. I suppose you can help me with the bandage, Paul? Sure. I'll get this coat off, too. There's a first aid kit in my knapsack. In here? Yes. What's this package on top? Well, that's for Mary. It's her Christmas present. For me? You can't open it until tomorrow. Oh, I'll ask him. Can't I open it, Santa? What? Santa? <laughs> this isn't Santa Claus. It's Sergeant Preston. Oh, I know who he is. Can't I open it? Please. Let her have it, Paul. All right. Here you are. Thank you, Santa. Oh, for God's sake. Just because you've got a red coat. And a red shirt. Too, I'm afraid. Don't let Mary see it. She can. Help me turn it away. Sure. Paul helped the sergeant bandage his wound, and as they worked, they talked in whispers. Is that right, Sergeant? It's perfect. I'll just put my coat around my shoulders. Here. Thanks, Paul. Durang and his men are camped at the bottom of the hill. I'm going to write a note and send King back to headquarters with it. To Dawson? Will he know where to go? All I have to do is tell him headquarters. He'll bring help. I'll stay here with you and Mary tonight until just before daybreak. What are you going to do then? Well, I'm going to let Taranga see me. I'm going to lead him back to the Dawson Trail. It'll be easier to capture him then. That isn't the reason. You're going to let him chase you so he won't come up here. You'd better not. You'd better stay with us. Maybe the inspector and the other men from the post will be here before morning. We'll see. Do you have a piece of paper and a pencil? In the table drawer. I'll get them. The sergeant wrote a note telling the inspector and Dawson exactly where Taranga were camped. Then he attached it to King's collar and led him to the door. You understand, don't you, boy? Headquarters. <laughs> right. Go on, King. Headquarters. The great dog ran across the clearing, a flash of silver in the moonlight, and then he disappeared in the forest. Go on, boy. How long will it take him to get there? He well, should make it in two hours. If Taranga doesn't see him. I put my trust in King before, and he's never failed me. He's a wonderful dog. I love you. Mary, for the last time... Never mind, Paul. I love you too, Mary. You the most beautiful doll in the whole world. You must thank your father for it. Because he told you. I know. Who 
When's he coming home? Tomorrow, perhaps. Or perhaps I'll take you and Paul down to Greenwood. Now, you'd better go to sleep. All right, Santa. Oh, we ought to stand guard. I'll do that. You go to sleep, too, Paul. Well, I guess I am sort of sleepy. Good night, Santa. <laughs> 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 Will you listen to that? I'm just as bad as she is. Good night, Paul. After the children were asleep, the sergeant put out the candle and took down the blanket from the window. He drew up a chair close to it and watched the trail leading up to the top of the hill and the forest all around. His plans were made. When morning came, it was likely that either Taranga or one of his men would find his tracks leading up to the cabin. If help didn't arrive before daybreak, he must be down at the bottom of the hill. He must let the renegades see him. He must lead them away from Paul and Mary. Once toward morning, he heard a yell from the bottom of the hill. It woke Mary, and she started to cry. He moved to her side and took her hand. What was it, Stan? Nothing, Mary. Well, I'm not afraid when you're here. That's good. Now, will you go back to sleep? Oh, I can't. Tell me a story. Tell me all about Christmas. The true story? Uh-huh. That's really the best. And so, as the moon set, and the northern lights faded from the sky, and the stars shone brightly through the darkness that came just before dawn, the sergeant told the little girl the story of the first Christmas. She nodded happily at every well-remembered part. And, and now the wise men. Well... That night, a bright star shone in the sky, and there were three wise men who saw it. Mm-hmm. Like the star I can see. Where? Up the window. Yes, like that, but much brighter. And the wise men decided to follow it, and it led them to the stable in Bethlehem. Where the baby was. Yes, Mary. And they brought gifts with them, and they laid them at the feet of the child. And, and that's why they give presents at Christmas time. That's the reason, but the presents aren't the most important thing. It's the way we feel at Christmas that matters. The warmth and kindness in our hearts. What we call the Christmas spirit. Why doesn't Taranga have it? Well, he may someday. And someday, maybe the Christmas spirit will stay with all of us through all the year. That's something to hope for. Oh, it, it's just beginning. What is? Christmas morning. My star's going away. You're right, Mary. It's getting light. I'm going to put on my parka now. Go out for a little walk. Why? Well, I want to see if there's any sign of King. Will you be gone long? That depends, Mary. You try to sleep a little more now. No, Sergeant, don't go. I must, Paul. Please don't. If you let them see you, you won't be able to get away from them. Stay here. Paul? What? I'm leaving you to stand guard over Mary. You'll do a good job, won't you? But we don't want you to... It's too late anyway. Listen. They're still down at the bottom of the hill. Maybe maybe the Maoris have come. Maybe you don't have to leave us, Sergeant. There's only one short way of telling that. How? King wouldn't stop down there. He'd come back here. If he's made it, if he's brought help, we should be... He did. There he is. Good boy, King. Mary, King's come back. King. There's a note attached to his collar. Not your note. No, it's from the inspector. King evidently wants to get back to you. I'm sending him on. We're down at the bottom of the hill, and we have Taranga surrounded. He can't possibly get away. It's going to be a Merry Christmas after all. It's good news, Paul. Yes, King. That's good work, boy. And even as the sergeant hugged King and the great dog licked his face, joyful over their reunion, the firing ceased at the bottom of the slope. A few minutes later, Inspector Conrad himself drove up the trail and announced that Taranga and his men had been surprised and rounded up without a casualty on either side. Taranga would soon be on his way back to Dawson, and Christmas would be celebrated on Christmas Creek as it should be. But the sergeant felt that Mary and Paul should be with their father on Christmas Day, and he bundled them both on his sled and started out for Greenwood. King, run, you huskies! With King setting the pace, the sled seemed to fly over the glistening snow. The forest was left behind. The white hills beyond sparkled under the bright sun. The sky was a matchless blue. Oh, it's a beautiful day. God's been saving it just for Christmas. And then, very distant, but crystal clear, they heard the sound of the bells in the little church at Greenwood. 
and King pricked his ears as he ran in a happy salute to the holiday sound. Closer and closer it came, until he rounded a bend in the shining river, and the little party could see the snow-covered cabins nestling among the evergreens, and the white church, too, and the people from miles around streaming into the service. And in front of the church itself, Harry Worth and Sonny and Mrs. Trent and the doctor and Paul and Mary's father. There's Paul. And the golden chimes rang out in welcome and celebration. Looking for your husband. All over. Taranka's been captured. Wonderful. Wonderful. Mary. Oh, I want to kiss you, Pat. Come here. Mm. Oh, my, that... That's a beautiful big hug. Oh, thank you for sending Santa to me. She just won't listen to reason. She thinks Sergeant Preston is Santa Claus because he has a red coat. Oh, he is. Is he really? Oh, yes, he is, Sonny. His team is dogs. Oh, well, naturally. In the Yukon. And he's kind and he's good and he wants us all to be kind and good. Isn't that Santa Claus? Uh-huh. Will you go to church with us, Sergeant Santa Claus? I certainly will, Sonny. Take my hand. Mine, too. All Come right. on. A merry, merry Christmas. A merry, merry Christmas to everyone. <laughs> She's saying it, too. Mary's right, you know. The sergeant is our Santa Claus. <laughs> Accidents can happen. Yes, fellows and girls, accidents do happen. Every few seconds, there's an accident and someone's hurt. What's more, in wintertime, there's more chance than ever of accidents due to snowy and icy roads. So be careful. Most accidents are due to just plain carelessness. Use your old bean when you're playing out of doors. Be careful when you cross the street. Snowy or icy streets make cars harder to control, harder to stop. Be careful with your sleds. Never coast or ride them on streets open to traffic. And never, never hitch a ride on the back of a truck or car. Don't take chances. Not even a little chance. Now, more than ever, be extra careful. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereals shot from guns. Be sure to hear the challenge of the Yukon Monday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. So long. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less.